So my discussion today, I just have questions. It's very much an open conversation. Tell me examples of how you feel when you go to a hospital. Tell me what frustrations are. Tell me about great experiences you've had. That's the sort of thing that we'll be talking about today. You know, when the doctor asks you, he's just like, so have you ever did any sexual activities? Yeah. Do any <laughs> recreational <laughs> drugs? And I'm just here like, and then it's just like, is this, and your mom, my mom's not in the room. Like the, now my mom doesn't go to doctors, but I still feel like, you know, like, like my mom's like behind my back. And if I say certain things, yeah, like, yeah. she's gonna go back. But even though they said there's confidentiality, I don't know, with the doctor, I feel like, I don't know, something about them makes it feel like they're gonna go tell your mom. So you're just like, no, no, no. It's just like, whatever it is, it's in the back of your head, you're like, you're not gonna say. So in my community, uh, when newcomers come, especially ladies, uh, you know, uh, to talk for their, you know, some di some diseases like breast cancer or menopause, they are not open. In my country, this like, you know, very shameful to talk about breast cancer. I don't want to be negative because I'm very happy that we have our OHIP, okay? But you go to the doctor, and you get a prescription. There's nothing to say what do you do to stay healthy. Illness is becoming an industry. Some people, oh, I, I cannot go to that, to that doctor, you know. I, she cannot, unless the, 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 uh, the daughter or, or somebody in the family can speak English for them, but not everybody is always available for them. What I find with most doctors, who don't know me very well is they don't talk to me. They talk to my mother. The paramedic is looking at me like I'm a freak or something. What kind of care am I getting in that ambulance if I'm experiencing maybe a heart attack or something? And these are things, stories that I've read where a trans woman of color has died of a heart attack because none of the paramedics did any life stuff. One of the worst statements I've ever heard in the medical system is this is how we've always done it and this is how it's going to be. And so when I hear that, I literally always take a deep breath and going, okay, here we go. And they said just like this, they were writing. And they have this thing where they put their eyeglass on here. <laughs> then they like flick it up and then look over the eyeglass. I'm like, um, that's all. I'm like, okay. I understand that you're a specialist, but you also have to take into account that I have a life, you know, and sometimes these, some of the doctors who are specialists have this thing that they're God. So mm -hmm. when you go to them, you have to wait to see them. And I mean, if you're taking compassion into account, look at, look at our lives. Some of us don't, I travel on wheel trans. I can't afford to miss my ride because then I don't get home. What I what I will attract me is that when I will enter, the first person, as I said earlier, should be welcoming and polite. And secondly, when you you have a glance, you can notice that things are you know disciplined, in order, and people are like looks like professional and, and neatness. Give eye contact, like you know, like a lot of the women in the room today have said, like. We're people and we, you know, like when somebody looks us in the eyes and says either, you know what, okay, we got this, I understand, or I don't get it, please tell me again, so give eye, good eye contact. So she asked, she wanted to be educated about, you know, she knew about trans, but she wanted to individualize that as me as a person and get to know me. And it allowed me to feel comfortable to talk about maybe health issues or be able to take my clothes off because my body, I always felt my body felt different. Just helping to kill the stigma that's out there with, with uh, natives, um, and again, with mental health and addiction, that, that does have a huge title um, above our head, and, and yeah, it does still follow us. Make us feel like loved, Elsie. 
because like it's not all the time like you could find love at home today's illness is not just uh, a physical uh, illnesses there are deep rooted um, things and especially in a diverse community where people have come and they have scars they have traumas they have memories they are settlement problems so it's just not the physical illnesses that are ailing the women recognize that I am a person with a disability but I'm also the same as everybody else I'm a woman I have the same same issues that every woman does but just remember that we're not all the same when they talk like uh, nicely and uh, calmly and they satisfy you the half of the disease is gone that time. <laughs>